Good morning. Today we'll be calculating the power for the device that's lifting these people upwards. And we'll be asking the question, is it realistic? If this was a question on a physics test, it would look something like this. Calculate the power required to lift the person of mass, whatever the mass is, at a constant speed of, and whatever the speed is. And so the definition of power is work over time. Now in a few moments, we'll see that power can be written as force multiplied by speed. So the question is, what assumptions are being made when we use the formula that is circled in yellow? Well, the first assumption is that the characters are moving at constant speed. So for the entire video clip, is the assumption of constant speed valid? Well, the answer is no. At the very beginning of the video clip, clearly the person is stationary and the person is accelerating upwards. So it's not valid at that point of the video clip. So on purpose, we will focus in on a part of the video where we believe the character is moving upwards at a constant speed. And so one of the assumptions being made when we derive the formula of power equals force multiplied by speed is that the person is being lifted at a constant speed. The next assumption is that the person is being lifted at a constant force. Is this valid? And the answer is yes. When the speed is constant, by definition, we know the acceleration is zero. And when the acceleration is zero, all the forces are balanced. And so, in this situation, we would say the applied force is equal to the weight, or the force of gravity. Now, when we're making this, we are assuming that the weight is the only force acting downwards. The reality is there's probably also a force of resistance acting downwards within the device that's lifting them. However, we're going to ignore that force. And so, the mass of the actress, according to Google, is that value there. And determining the applied force, we get the value of 523.4 newtons. Goal is ultimately to show that power is equal to force multiplied by speed. And so we'll begin with the definition of work. Work is equal to force multiplied by distance multiplied by cosine of an angle theta. This formula is valid when the force is constant. And so the question is, what's this angle theta? How do we figure out cosine of the angle theta? Well, the angle in consideration is the angle between the direction of force and the direction of the movement. Well, the force is acting upwards, and the white arrows indicating the direction of motion. Therefore, since these two vectors point in the same direction, the force vector and the direction of movement, the angle is zero. Remember that cosine of zero is equal to one. And so substituting zero degrees, we end up with work equals force times distance. Continuing on, and substituting that equation into the power formula, we now have that power equals force times distance divided by time. Remembering the definition of speed, speed is equal to distance divided by time. And just rearranging the variable somewhat. And now substituting for distance over time, we'll write speed. Here is our derivation. Power is equal to force multiplied by speed. And so the question is speed. We already know the force. What is the speed? So now our focus is going to be on calculating speed. Remember that speed is distance over time. And so to start off, we'll need a scale. And we'll use this line here as a scale. Her height, according to Google, is 1.6 meters. Now when the length of that line is measured, 
Using the program, it's 8.8 .8 centimeters. Drawing the white line, the white line represents the length of the glass for the window. And the question is, what is the length of the glass? Well, the length of the glass is exactly 7.6 centimeters. And now doing some math, we end up with a value of 1.38 meters for the length of the glass. Not the entire window, just the glass. And so that's the distance we're going to be using today, 1.38 meters. Now to calculate time. We're going to call that time 1, where the green arrow is pointing, and that's the time her foot will hit the bottom of the glass. And we're going to count frames. We'll stop counting frames at the red arrow. That is, when her foot passes the red arrow, or the upper part of the glass. So we're going to start counting here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So it looks like by the 13th frame, the actress's feet are roughly in line with the top of the glass for that window. It may be 12 frames, it's hard to tell from this image, but we'll stick with 13 frames. So based on our analysis, in total that was 13 frames from time one to time two. Frame rate is 24 frames per second for this specific video. And dividing those two numbers, we end up with a time of 0 0.5416 seconds. So that means from when her foot passes the bottom of the glass to when her foot hits the top of the glass, 0.5416 seconds has passed. And now to calculate speed, we know the distance. We know the time, and of course, we're assuming constant speed. And so dividing these numbers, we end up with this value here. And now substituting our numbers into the power formula. Power is around 1300 watts for the actress who is being pulled upwards. Of course, circling the heavier actor there, that power would probably be closer to 2200 watts. And so the actual electrical power converted by the motor is most likely much greater than the power calculations we just did, as the energy conversion is not 100% efficient. And the calculations we just did assumed that the energy conversions were 100% efficient. So do these actual devices that lift people exist? Or are they only seen in the movies? Well, the answer is they exist. If you do a YouTube search, you can quickly see several YouTubers who have created these devices and they actually work quite well. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.